All right, today I'm going to talk about protein folding. So, uh, you know, we're mostly made of protein. But when you look at somebody, you're looking at their protein. And if you haven't noticed, we're, we have a three-dimensional shape. So just having a chain of uh, amino acids does not create a three-dimensional shape. So we have to do that, and that's done through what's known as protein folding. So uh, basically, after the uh, synthesis of the, of the amino acid chain, these proteins are folded into that three-dimensional shape, and they are assisted by chaperone protein. Which we did see in the uh, up here. That was these little proteins attaching here. They're making things sure everything folds correctly. Um, if you don't know what a chaperone is. Chaperone is somebody that basically, uh, up here, and my parents actually dated, uh, they had to have a chaperone. So uh, my grandparents chose a chaperone. And this chaperone lived in uh, Madison, Indiana. My dad lived in Cincinnati. My mother lived in Louisville. So uh, my dad would have to go pick up the chaperone first in Madison, Indiana, and then drive down to Louisville, go on a date with my mom and the chaperone. And the chaperone is just there to make sure no funny business goes on. After the date, he'd take my mom home. Then he'd have to take the chaperone back to Madison, Indiana. Then he would then get home. So he would get home very late after a date with my mom. Um, so chaperones make sure that proteins get folded correctly, that they don't get. However, proteins do get misfolded. And when they do, they'll be tagged and dismantled. I'll show you that uh, coming up here. Because um, proteins can be folded in different ways. And, uh, but if it is, these misfolded proteins can cause disease. So let's just go through the basic structures of protein folding. Uh, the primary structure shown up above there is just the amino acid chain. Uh, it's just a straight line of the amino acids. As it's being made, it'll start forming hydrogen bonds with other amino acids, and they can create two basic shapes. And these are referred to as the secondary structure. So there are two types. There's the alpha helix. And the beta pleated sheet is the other one. And these uh, protein shapes can give different proteins their function. So wool is an alpha helix for the most part. And that's why when it's put in hot water, it'll kind of coil down and shrink because of this alpha helix. Or silk is a beta pleated sheet. It's all spread out and it really cannot shrink. So you don't see shrinking in silk. Uh, they will then fold so these beta pleated sheets and alpha helixes will all get together and it'll fold to create this three-dimensional shape. And that's referred to as the tertiary structure of a protein. Some proteins never go beyond this tertiary state. state. It's done, it's finished. But then some will become what's known as quaternary. So basically several of these tertiary proteins will combine together to form a quaternary structure. So an example of a quaternary structure protein would be uh, hemoglobin, which actually has four different uh, tertiary uh, proteins attached to it. All right. So as I mentioned before, uh, proteins that are misfolded are destroyed. Basically, it's misfolded, and your uh, body recognizes that. It tags it with a, another protein referred to as ubiquitin. Ubiquitin attaches to the protein here, and then that basically signals to a proteasome, so a organelle that actually breaks down protein, comes in here, grabs the protein, and then breaks it down to polypeptides, which will then be broken down amino acids, and they'll be reused again. But that protein will not be used. The function doesn't work correctly, so you need to get rid of it. What happens if we don't get rid of it? Well, then you can get um, different diseases, actually. Uh, misfolded proteins will disrupt the function of other proteins. So an example of this is the prion disorders. Um, so these prion disorders will uh, basically, they're found, a lot of them are found in your brain. 
and they're a structural protein. If they're folded, misfolded correctly, it basically causes your brain to form holes in it. So it kind of looks like a sponge, and uh, which then means you'll end up with some mental disabilities and eventually death as it goes on. Uh, the problem with these, these uh, proteins, these prion proteins can actually be passed on to other people and either you can ingest it or in the case of uh, some of these mentally uh, disturbed people that have prion disorders, there is a genetic disorder in humans called Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, they would be put in a mental institution and uh, electric shock therapy was often uh, indicated in these cases. So they would uh, bring the person in, put these probes and stick it into their brain and then they would juice them up and then they would take those out, bring the next person in and they would stick those probes in their brain, juice them up. Well, what they wouldn't do is actually wash the probes. And so the prion proteins from the one person that had Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease would be passed on to the other person. So the other person may have um, mental issues, but then he would get Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease on top. There are other diseases besides prion disorders that occur. Parkinson's is similar. Huntington's is also one of these misfolded proteins, as is Alzheimer's. Uh, so looking at uh, prions, there are some other uh, different disorders. This one actually turns out to be fairly common. Um, so basically, uh, we see a disorder similar in sheep called uh, scrappy. And basically, uh, have holes in their brain and they are going to uh, suffer and die young. Uh, another one is called bovine spongiform encephalopathy. You may have heard of it as mad cow disease. And uh, Creutzfeldt-Jakob is a human variant. Um, the term, and as far as scrappy and mad cow disease, what happened there is uh, this prion disorder, it is genetically predispositions. People can actually have a gene that causes their prions to be misfolded incorrectly. Uh, what happened here though, these cows would have the disorder and um, they would basically, they found to uh, get cows to produce more milk, they would feed them bone meal. And what they were doing is basically grinding up the bones of dead cows and feeding it to cows. So they were feeding cows to cows, and that's what passed these prions to these younger cows. And uh, they would end up with uh, these mad cow disorders. And people eating hamburger from these cows would also develop this mad cow disorder, except it'd be. Um, that's very common in uh, England. They were doing it for years, not quite as long in the rest of Europe. The United States never did this type of thing because we did the scrappy thing. We were cheap, so we knew not to do that to cows. Um, but the, basically, if you lived in England for a certain period of time or Europe in a certain period of time, you can't get blood because they assume you have this prion disorder in you. So that's what happens if your cells do not correctly. So uh, that's all I have on protein folding. Go ahead and take the uh, Google form quiz to show that you understand protein folding.